Turning now to your community focus, the clock is ticking for Congress to fund the government and avoid a shutdown. The government is set to run out of money at the end of next week. Joining me now to talk about the ongoing negotiations in D.C., Massachusetts Congressman Jake Auchincloss, live via Zoom. Congressman, thanks for being here. Good to be with you, Kim. So we know things are changing hour by hour, but take us to the Capitol right now. What's your understanding of where the negotiations stand on a spending bill? Well, if this were a year ago, we would have been talking about our investments in manufacturing and clean energy, how we empowered Medicare to negotiate drug prices, how we lowered health care premiums for millions of Americans. Uh, unfortunately, we're now fast forwarded a year. Republican Speaker Kevin McCarthy is in charge and we can't even keep the lights on. The government is set to shut down unless he can put country before politics. And to date, he has refused to do so. Uh, and what's frustrating is that this isn't a math problem. This is a MAGA problem. All of the votes we need to do all the things we need to do are there. And the reason I know that is in the springtime, we voted on the deal to fund the government and it had overwhelming bipartisan support. But now Kevin McCarthy has gotten scared of Donald Trump. He has gotten scared of his MAGA extremist caucus, and he is shirking his responsibility to put that bill on the floor. So at this point, how likely do you think it is that the government will shut down? I can't predict or prognosticate when we have a nihilistic caucus on the other side of the aisle, which we have right now, because they don't want to get to yes. This crew of 30 to 50 MAGA members of the House actually want it to shut down. So I, I just can't predict when we're negotiating with people who don't want to actually get a deal. Uh, what I will say is it will be it would be the most preventable shutdown in my lifetime because we already voted on the deal. The House voted on it. The Senate voted on it. The president signed it. Everybody agreed. And that deal is a good deal that funds the government while cutting the deficit. And before we move on to some other topics, just walk me through quickly again, remind our viewers what is going to be the impact on the average American if the government does shut down and run out of money. In short, it would threaten the remarkable economic recovery since COVID. We've created more than 13 million jobs, almost a million manufacturing jobs. We've seen inflation go down month over month. Uh, all of that is threatened when the federal government can't do its basic functions and, and uh, execute its basic programs. Switching gears, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky is in the U.S. to try and make his case for more funding from America and Ukraine's war with Russia. You agree that lawmakers should approve the additional $24 billion that's being floated, but some public polling has shown the majority of Americans think we shouldn't spend any more here. So why do you disagree? Ukraine is fighting on the front lines of the free world and standing with Ukraine demonstrates to the world over that the United States stands with freedom and democracy. And there is a couple reasons why that's so important. First of all, it's a message not just to the autocrat in the Kremlin, but also the autocrat in Beijing, our near peer adversary, the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, and we need to demonstrate that we are not to be trifled with and that we, we, we will not appease, we will stand tall. Uh, number two is it's been a tremendous return on investment. For less than Americans spend on soft drinks every year, we have cratered half of Russia's conventional military capacity. We've doubled NATO's border. We've induced our allies in East Asia and Europe to increase their defense spending. And we have strengthened and deepened NATO's resolve at a time of increasing geopolitical uncertainty. Uh, our partnership with Ukraine is paying dividends. Ukraine can and will be successful, but we cannot cut and run. That is appeasement. And just quickly before I let you go, we've got about 20 seconds. Another conflict happening overseas in Azerbaijan um, in a region with Armenians there called Artsakh. A ceasefire was reportedly reached today after the U.S. called on Azerbaijan to stop the military action it was taking. But do you still think the U.S. should cut off aid to Azerbaijan? If Azerbaijan does not make that ceasefire more comprehensive and more sustainable by negotiating a true peace that guarantees the security of the Armenian population in Artsakh, then the United States should not be sending security dollars that Azerbaijan may then use to commit war crimes. All right, that is all the time that we have. Massachusetts Congressman Jake Auchincloss, thanks so much for being here at 4 today. Good to be with you.